that is specifically set aside and has the names etched into it of the 44 men who were aboard the ship but survived. And then later, one man, one of those who survived, left in his will that he wanted to be cremated and he wanted his urn to be placed inside the ship. And that request was honored and that request was then opened up to all of the other 44 survivors. There are five remaining survivors of the USS Arizona and they all had the opportunity to do the same thing. And in fact, one of them will have the urn of his ashes brought down below. A Navy diver will take it below during a very special ceremony that the Navy does for the family and he will carry the urn across the water and bring it back down into the ship and the way that the diver describes it is that when he does that he can feel the pull of the ship when he releases it from his hands pulling that loved one that member of the Arizona ship back into its home and the man who's going to have that done on December 5th his brother rests at the bottom of the of the of this water as well so he will be rejoining his brother 38 pairs of brothers uh, served on the USS Arizona so it, it's a, an incredibly special uh, group of people and he will be learning about all of that and seeing those names that are etched into marble there mm -hmm. uh, there's also a spot where all presidents stand and he will watch he will look down into that spot which really you can see the ship down in the water it's all still there underneath the water and um, he'll stop in that spot as well that's right near the wreath laying uh, replaying ceremony where that will take place as well Shannon so what a beautiful night it does it looks like a gorgeous day from what we can see on, on this end from Washington DC and again folks now watching live as the president and first lady are in Hawaii he is now getting ready to visit and do a, le a wreath laying at the USS Arizona where we've talked about um, more than a thousand US sailors and Marines lost their lives the ship is still there and he will get a chance to now see it firsthand uh, Martha you've had a chance to, to visit and and check things out while you've been there covering this the last couple of days um, what's been the mood about those anticipating this visit by the president a lot of enthusiasm Shannon they love to show this place off you know the people who take care of it are top-notch and every one of them has a deep understanding of the history of the place and they are so glad that people come here to pay their respects they also are very determined that it is a place of it's a resting place and it is not somewhere where people are you know whipping their cell phones out and you know taking crazy pictures it's like a, it's a very solemn place and they are very insistent on keeping that pure and keeping that sacred for the people who are entombed underneath there so um, and I there's no doubt that you know the president is going to feel that solemnity as he walks out I think he just stepped he's just about oh no he's still um, getting ready to get off the off the boat um, but it is, it's just a very solemn environment and, and the people were very enthusiastic about the president coming. You know, obviously there's a lot of concerns in Hawaii too for the reasons that we've talked about in terms of the threat that's posed from North Korea. Uh, you know, once again, they're, they're trying, they don't want people to panic, but people are, are concerned about that threat and they understand it because they have, you know, they've had it happen here before. So it, it is definitely an environment that is is at the ready. Yeah, and, and Martha, we can- And there's the president as he steps off. And as they continue forward, we could see a little bit in the corner of one of the final shots there uh, that there is heavy security presence there uh, guarding over uh, this special visit today. Uh, not always the easiest thing to do in the waters, uh, but they are patrolling and making sure that this uh, first couple is, is safe as they carry out this very special moment. Yeah, the bridge that you see behind them has been closed off. It goes out to Ford Island, which is the where the admirals, a lot of the enlisted men lived on Ford Island and some of the um, higher ups had homes there. So that's a, a very special place too. But that whole bridge is shut down. And you can see, as you point out, Shannon, some of the Coast Guard vessels that are in between us and where the president is right now, uh, which is really not a far distance at all, but they are very seriously patrolling the area. Obviously, it's, um, it's a high security event. And we watch now as they make their way inside. You know, just to mention, um, President Bush, not, uh, 41, gave a speech at the 50th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. And he said, I have no rancor in my heart 
for Japan or Germany. The war is over. We won. And that was a very significant moment. And it was probably the moment that that sort of turned this from what everyone here calls you know, a memorial to also a memorial to peace. Because there have been so many, you know, that after that moment it sort of released everyone from any residual anger against the Japanese or against Germany, that the war was over and that it was time to move on. Uh, and that is something else that you really feel here because there are many Japanese visitors who come. There are many visitors also, um, you know, reconciliation visits of people from Japan who want to come together in this spot and to recognize that we don't ever want this to happen again. And that, you know, it was full of young men who were defending their country, who were, you know, fighting as warriors. They were doing what they were told. Um, but it, it is a very stark reminder of, of all of the loss, frankly, and, uh, and it's, it's a lesson in history, really, for, for all of us. And then you had President Obama, who visited with Prime Minister Abe, which was another hugely significant moment of reconciliation. And, uh, you know, that, that, that's, it's, it's, a, it's where you want to be, and it's where you want to come to understanding in terms of the end of these events and these parts of our history which are, are difficult and devastating. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting you mentioned the comments by uh, President Bush 41. Amazing even more so when you think about the fact that he was shot down in service to this country uh, and he knows the rigors of war and, and what many of these families would have experienced. And then as you mentioned, uh, President Obama with the Prime Minister as well. Now we see the President and First Lady. And again, it doesn't take long for that very special somber moment for the President and First Lady to participate in the wreath there at the USS Arizona. Uh, it is a beautiful night, and our Martha McCallum is there covering this part, portion of the President's trip as he gets ready to head on to Asia as well. Uh, short moment, Martha, but very significant. Yeah, and you could see when he was standing in there, I don't know if people noticed off to the left, uh, that was the area where the more recently interred, they have their names there, and this is, we'll watch. Thanks to Martha McCallum, who is there on the ground in Hawaii, helping to cover this portion of the president's visit uh, there right now at the USS Arizona. He continues on a tour. He had talked about how much he looked forward to being able to see this with his own eyes and to experience it. Having laid a wreath there, he and the First Lady are getting a good look at the actual wreckage of the USS Arizona, which is there.
Um, let's bring back in our panel, Vince Colonnese and Richard Fowler. Um, this is just the first step of many important days and meetings for the president moving forward on his Asia trip. Vince, what does he need to accomplish? What would be considered a win for him on this trip? Well, if he can figure out a way to convince China especially, but all the other Asian countries that he's going to encounter, to be real partners in trying to bring North Korea to heel. I mean, North Korea is of primary importance to him. I think all of the interviews he gave in the lead up to this, I think trade continues to be of concern, but North Korea primarily, especially as today, I believe they released a statement saying that they're concerned that they, they feel like there's a humanitarian crisis going on within their own country, but that's the suggestion that the sanctions are working, and he's gotten a lot of these countries to join him at the table of the United Nations, get these sanctions imposed on North Korea, and I, I think he He's going to try and hammer on the point and try and get some more help there. Richard, your thoughts? I think Vince is right. I think North Korea is going to be this president's top priority, and I think we're seeing some posturing from North Korea today. Beyond just that statement, we also saw um, more conjecture from North Korea with the sort of appearance of the f North Korean first lady, which is sort of this ideal to sort of shifting of the imagery of North Korea from this war country to more of she's supposed to represent the peacefulness of the regime and the humanitarianism of the regime. And so they're really trying to sort of put on a show as President Trump makes his way to Asia. So it's going to be critical for him to not only bring in China as a partner, but figure out how he wants to deal with North Korea. Is it going to be a hard line stance or is diplomacy going to be part of the play? And I think the other part that this part, the other, the other sort of difficult, the, the difficult deal he's going to have is how is he going to deal with China as it plays North Korea? Because China is going to be a big player here. And China, as well as South Korea, wants diplomacy to be part of this conversation. And the president seems to have a harder line. So that's going to be that working out a sort of stringing that needle is going to be critical for him as he goes North Korea for the next 12 days. Yeah, and very significant always when you have a U.S. president going to meet in China and to meet with Chinese leaders there about these very difficult conversations. All right, panel, thank you very much. Stick thank around. You. Uh, you've been watching live as the president is in Hawaii visiting Pearl Harbor, something he said he looked forward to. He's now laid a wreath there, and he and the first lady will continue on on this very important Asian trip. We'll be right back with more.